Hello, this is Dr. Vib, and I thought I'd do the following real fun integral uh, from zero to pi by two of uh, tangent to the x to the power i, where of course i is the square root of minus one. Now, I'll you can do this using complex analysis um, and uh, rectangular contours um, by do, doing various substitutions, uh, but I'd I think a more fun way to do this is uh, using um, beta and gamma functions. So I'll take that route. So uh, our starting point uh, is one of the many uh, tricks you learn with uh, the subject of beta function is representing the beta function in different ways. So in some of my other videos, I have actually indicated this uh, great way of looking at beta functions. So beta of n comma m is two times the integral from zero to pi by two of sine of two n to the power uh, two n minus one theta cosine to the power two m minus one theta d theta. Now here m and n can be anything and so the obvious thing to do is write uh, tangent as sine over cosine and figure out what that is. For now, I'm gonna call this power r and solve it in general and then put r equal to i at the end. So um, <clears throat> let me write my integral, rewrite my integral um, in a um, suitable fashion. So I have my integral i is equal to zero from zero to pi over two. I won't change the limits. Um, sine to the power rx, cosine to the power minus rx. So it's sine over cosine and I've taken cosine to the numerator uh, dx. Okay, so the resemblance is um, very good. The factor of two, we'll have to adjust. So let's figure out the values though. So I'm gonna get two n minus one must equal to r and two m minus one must equal to negative r. So let's see what that leads to. So this means two n equal to r plus one and two m equals one minus r uh, or n equals um, half plus r over two and m equals half minus r over two. All right, that looks really good. So now I can write my integral i as being equal to one half beta n, which is um, half plus r over two, comma, m, which is one half minus r over two. Now, if you remember, beta and m can also be written in terms of gamma. So that's uh, a popular formula. Beta and m can be written as gamma n, gamma m over gamma of n plus m. Okay, uh, B videos where I explore that. So I can use this. So I have one half gamma of half plus r over two, gamma of half minus r over two, divided by the sum of those two things. Lo and behold, that cancels. And then I have gamma of one. Well, gamma of one is just zero factorial, which is just one. So that gives me one half gamma of half plus r over two, 
gamma of half minus r over two. Now, there is a um, very interesting way to write that in terms of what's called the complement gamma identity. So I'm gonna prove the following little result or lemma, if you will. So let me write this lemma. Uh, um, and that lemma is this, gamma of um, half plus P, where P is anything, times gamma of half minus P is equal to pi divided by cosine P pi. Well, the proof of this relies on a very simple uh, identity, which again, I've shown you in some other videos known as a complement gamma identity. So let's um, use that. The complement identity is the statement that gamma of z, remember that gamma is a function defined on the complex plane, gamma of one minus z is pi over sine of pi z. All we now have to do is put z equal to half plus pi, uh, p I mean. Then one minus z is one minus half plus pi, or one minus half minus p. So this is gonna be one half minus p. And uh, then the last thing we need to do is when you put this in there, you're gonna get also pi over sine of pi times half minus p, uh, half plus p. So this becomes gamma of half plus p times gamma of half minus p equals pi over sine of pi by two um, plus p, so that's what z is. Now sine is positive in the first and second quadrant, so sine of pi by two plus p is just cosine p, and that uh, cosine p pi. Now, well, wait a minute, wait a sec. Um, there's a pi there, so p pi. So it's gonna be cosine p pi. That proves the result. Let's use that result. So I have one half pi divided by cosine, in this case, p is equal to r over two, pi r over two. And now finally, I'm gonna put what r is. r is equal to the complex number i. So this gives me one half pi over cosine i pi over two. Well, but uh, you can either use Osborne's relation here where cosine of i theta is, is the same as cosh theta, but why use heavy technology? We can use the definition of cosine in terms of complex exponentials. So I just want to remind you that cosine theta is just uh, e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta divided by two by Euler's formula. So um, this can also be written as two times cosine theta is equal to e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. So that's the last thing. Um, so I have two times cosine theta there already. So let me just get rid of that uh, half. Here, let me use the all important whiteout. So I've taken that two inside cosine theta, and I can write this as e to the i times theta, which is that whole thing, plus e to the i minus theta. Well, that is uh, pi over e to the minus pi by two, since i squared is negative one, plus e to the pi by two. A beautiful result of a um, tremendous uh, fun integral from zero to pi over two of tangent to the power i 
even though it's raised to the power i, the result is completely real. So this is a real number. Okay, that's the end of this uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it.